strive to help you in every aspect of your lawn, gardening, and landscaping needs. We have awesome lawn decor, everything from metal art to whatever you might need to spruce up your garden. Our quality of produce is number one. Prices are easily comparable to anywhere. Think about your screen fire beds right now. We need to get going, make that soil ready, and get our planting shoes on. So come on down to Megan's Market and we'll make you a great deal. Not only can we give you the knowledge you need, but our goal is your success. Welcome back to yet another Eastland County Today Live. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about our uh, insurances and such and how that's actually affecting the communities and the job places and such. And without any further ado here, we're going to end up having an HV take the wheel. We have Kent Coffee with us today, local insurance agent, well known, very active in our community, good citizen. And he's going to answer a lot of insurance questions that most of us uh, may know how to ask, but we're not sure what the answers are. Clint, why don't you just give us a quick rundown first and then we'll we'll jump in when when occasion occurs all right well kind of one of the topics that we mainly wanted to talk about today i think was was something that's affected the whole nation really and everybody's kind of talking about it and that's kind of what everybody affectionately calls obamacare right now um and you know kind of what some of the dealings i've had with it what some experiences with the, the government website the coverages and some of the how folks can get subsidies for it and things like that so kind of with your permission, I'll just kind of do a little brief overview with it. Um, a lot of folks call it Obamacare. It's actually, a lot of people also know it as ACA or the Affordable Care Act. Right. All kind of interchangeable. You'll also hear it often called the healthcare marketplace. I've heard it called other things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> that's true too. So kind of all of those terms are interchangeable. Um, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare is what everybody calls it. So that's kind of what it goes by now. And um, so that's kind of what the, is the law of the land now. Um, when the government first passed it, um, I think their goal was that each state would set up their own uh, health care exchange or a way for mm -hmm. folks to go in and buy health insurance. About half did and about half didn't. And the half that did run their own state exchanges and the half that didn't all use the federal marketplace. And Texas is one of the states that did not. And so our uh, our folks can use the federal marketplace when they enroll if they want. So some of the good things about it, I would say, at least from a customer perspective, is that um, there is no underwriting now. So somebody comes in and wants health insurance and it's during an enrollment period. Well, in your office, do you offer this? We do. Okay. We do. Um, so if somebody wants health insurance, now they really don't have to have any medical questions asked of them. Basically, the only question to ask is whether they use tobacco or not. That's of any of any medical type question. Um, that does affect their rate, but from you know, really it doesn't matter what medical condition a person might have. That's a that's a big difference from the way it used to be. What about alcohol? Uh, doesn't ask them any. Doesn't any, ask. Doesn't okay. ask anything like that at all. Okay. Um, so that's it's different. So from a customer perspective, they can get it if they're during an enrollment period. And, and I'll mention those a little bit. Those are, there's a different enrollment periods. Um, so no medical questions. The other is that the government mandated a lot of coverages that, that have, to, have to be in these, in these policies. Um, there's a list of 10 things. I won't go through every one of them, but probably one of the bigger ones is childbirth and child care. Um, previously, a lot of individual plans or most of them didn't cover childbirth, or if you add an endorsement, it's extremely expensive, it's covered now. Uh, well, child care, um, very broad coverages for mental, uh, mental health, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and things like that. 10 things that they kind of mandated, and then a lot of mandated coverages that were like wellness coverage that um, are outside of the policy deductible that folks can take advantage of. So that's, that's some of the good things about it. Um, 
depending on your perspective, some of the bad things about it are the mandated coverages. Uh, there's a flip side to everything, and, and those mandated coverages can certainly, I would think, drive costs up. What are some of the bad parts? Um, now there's big penalties for folks. If, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That don't have it. I see. Um, that's probably the, that's probably, and I brought a list of the penalties every year, not every year, but for three years, they, they multiply and get pretty, pretty, pretty big. Um, so, you know, that's probably one thing. The mandated coverages, I think you could see this is my opinion. You could see drive the prices up over the, a lot just because the coverages can be very expensive. Some of the things they mandated. One of them being, you know, no cap in the policy, no one million or two million or three million. My so, word. so some some scary scary spots of it as well. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the good and bad. Um, you can only get it during certain times, open enrollment period. Um, kind of like how the Medicare system yeah. has worked for years, yeah. in that there's a certain time of the year where you can get. Sign you up. can change Sign your up. Medicare and do things like that. It's set up similarly, so and they they've adjusted the dates every year. Maybe they'll have it right where they want it eventually. But right for this coming year, it's going to be from November first until um, I think January thirty first. Last year it was November fifteenth to February fifteenth. So they kind of backed up the days a little bit this year. They they tweak those every every year. Um, and kind As of, the government is prone to do. Yes, they have, and yeah. they've uh, they've tweaked them this year three, two or three times. Um, in fact, does this include prescription drugs? Um, they all cover each plan covers prescription drugs. Some cover it with with very little deductible, and some cover it under the larger deductible. So you can kind of pick and choose on different plans whether you want prescription drugs broadly covered or or covered under the big deductible, which right. can be $6,600 is kind of the biggest, biggest deductible somebody could have. May I inject that the one local independent druggist uh, up at Eastman Drug, they will take you, because I've been there, they, they will take you through a plan, the various plans, they'll examine your plans and compare them and 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 help you find the best mm -hmm. now, this is kind of off of your subject i know but it it's important for people to know i think right. yeah they do that and especially with medicare part d plans right there's a wide variety of those yeah. and they're real good about going through those yeah ones, I, think. Um, I apologize for getting you okay. off subject. that's all right no problem at all it's kind of it was on subject still um just my opinion on kind of who this has helped the most. Um, certainly people with pre-existing conditions that could not. Are they out. excluded? They are not. So they're not excluded. They are not. They're so, going to pay more. Uh, they will pay the same price as somebody that that's that runs a marathon every day. So it is a, uh, that is certainly the group I think that's helped the most. It's my opinion that it, you know, for them, they could not get health insurance. They couldn't get it otherwise. They yeah. can now. Um, so you could certainly have situations where folks with severe medical conditions could get insurance as long as they were in an enrollment period. If they miss that enrollment period, the government's fairly strict about nobody can enroll outside of an enrollment period. Uh, we're in a special enrollment period right now that the government kind of just created this year um basically they felt when people were doing their taxes they were getting surprised that they had to pay penalty so they created a kind of a special enrollment period allegedly for this year only for mm -hmm. folks who have filed their taxes had to pay a penalty and will attest to that that they didn't really realize all this was going down and they're they can enroll up and through the end of april and it, and still inside of an enrollment period if they meet those three criteria. So um, that's kind of an enrollment period that they don't usually have that's going on right now. Well, what is this penalty? How, how, do, how do they judge what a person owes? Um, it's a good question. Um, 
2014 had its own penalty. 2015 will have its own penalty. And 2016 will have its own penalty. Escalating, apparently. Escalating uh, dramatically, especially the last year. I don't have them memorized, so I will take a peek at those. Now, does that impl uh, include employers who are, are required to provide or who do require if they have 50 employees or something? Like that? That's a good question. Um, it does not, if somebody has a, a qualifying employer plan, right. then, then of course they won't have to, they won't have to pay the penalty. Um, so, so somebody that has a group plan through work, which a lot of people do, you know, those folks are going to be okay as far as, as far as penalty goes. Um, no big issue for them so on this. As far as the penalty itself goes, uh, some folks have already run into it for 2014. If well, you, I was getting around to this. What about in your year? own office? Have you had a number of affected people, people who have been severely affected by this? Um, at least in my own office, I haven't, as far as the tax penalty, I haven't had a whole lot of people that have come in just too upset. The 2014 penalty is not, because that's what they would be paying this year. Right. It's not uh, as onerous as others are going to be. Uh, for 14, and, and some folks haven't filed their taxes yet, um, it would be the greater of $95 per adult or $47.50 per child up to age 18, and the maximum of $285 per family. Uh, or one percent of their income over the tax filing threshold. Really, it's going to be that ninety-five or the forty-seven fifty. So not a not a horrible hit. But in fifteen, for folks filing next year, it jumps to three twenty-five per adult and one hundred and sixty-two fifty per child. A max of nine hundred and seventy-five dollars. Now that could hurt. It could. It absolutely could. People are going to people will feel that. Two thousand sixteen, um, it really jumped six hundred and ninety-five dollars. Per adult, three hundred forty-seven fifty per child, and the max of a family of two thousand eighty-five dollars. Right. So uh, next year it'll be painful. The year after that will certainly be painful. So, yeah. has the government had to set up a tremendous another round of administrative, uh, investigative uh, compliance? offices to to govern this um i'm not an expert on that irs is really in, in kind of the one that's involved with the mandate on this the irs kind of in charge of this i know at least from an enrollment perspective they have they've they've had to hire a lot of people lot because of people. during that open enrollment period uh you know you could wait you know an hour or so before you could get a person and uh they've opened some obviously some does that sound like an expanding government uh it definitely was expansion of government in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't see any other way you could slice that you know all of the plan providers are individual companies um so a lot of people are under the misconception sometimes that that obamacare is government insurance yeah. Technically, it's not. They're buying. They're buying insurance from an individual insurance company. Every state's different, um, so that part is still coming to an individual company. Though, folks that get subsidized premium, the government pays part of their premium to their insurance company, and then they pay. They pay the rest. The subsidies can be extremely large, and the government can pay huge portions of the premium. Is it based on salary or in total income or? Uh, a little bit of both. Both. Yeah, both. Um, it's based on household income and it's based on household members. So a household of four has a pretty broad range where they can get subsidized premium versus a household of two, which is a little narrower right. and lower. And and it's anybody that earns income in that household. So you could have a you could have a child that earned income sure. if it would be included in that. But the, you know, the ranges on the income are very broad. Um, in fact, I've got them kind of interesting. <laughs> and I just took this straight off the, the government's website, which is healthcare.gov. Um, so if anybody wanted to look that up, they're welcome. To <laughs> they, they are, they could, they could. Um, for instance, a household of four, the, the, the income range would be between 23,850 and ninety-five thousand four hundred dollars. 
That's a broad range. That is a very broad range. Um, the subsidy amount, and I don't have it specifically what it would be, but, but you know, at, at a household of four that made $25,000, it would be several hundred dollars, several hundred dollars versus one that was might make 90. Right. You know, it might be $30 a month sure. or something like that. Um, when, when folks do get subsidized premium, what they'll have to do is, is guesstimate what their income would be for that year. So for right now, people are, are estimating what their income is for 2015. Right. Um, and a lot of times those are estimates you got right now. You got a lot of people that are in and out of jobs, oil field jobs yeah. and things like that. So it's hard to get it exactly right. It won't be perfect. It will not be. In fact, you could have a pretty big variance. Yeah. Um, the, what the, what's recommended is that if somebody does either have a big increase or decrease in their income, they would go ahead and update their, their, their account with healthcare.gov and they would adjust that subsidy sum because what you might see is you might have somebody who says, I, you know, I think our household income is going to be $30,000 and they have a fortuitous year and they have a $50,000 income. Well, at the end of that year, well, when they do their taxes, the government's going to say, we based you your made subsidy. a little mistake there. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. We based your subsidy on yeah. 30. And so what they'll do is they'll calculate, well, we gave you $200 a month. You only needed $100 a month. or So we're going to have, you'll have a tax bill of an extra $1,200 at the end of the year. What a blow. Yeah. So yeah. that's why guesstimating your, your income is important. Yeah. Very important. So that's kind of how the subsidized premiums work. But on the lower ends of the income scale, you could have folks that had plans that might cost $300 that they might pay $30 for or $20 for very, very heavily subsidized. Well, do you and your staff spend a lot of time explaining, having to explain this to people who come in? I definitely spent it. A lot of time during the open so. enrollment period. I would think so. Um, <clears throat> a lot of time. Um, it's so complicated. It is. It's, uh, you know, and it's, you know, a lot of folks don't like dealing with the website, don't like dealing oh, with no. the, right. don't like calling in. It, they ask you a, a lot of. They want to look at Clint Coffee and have him tell you. <laughs> that's, that's right. So you know, basically, we help them do it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't cost them anything on premium to do it. So we, right. you know, we've taken a, a lot of people through that site. It's, uh, you know, I do most of mine over the phone. Some people use the website last year, which, you know, was the first year of Obamacare. The website had horrible problems. You might recall all You couldn't get in. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> yeah. get in. Yeah. Yeah. They seem, they seem to have fixed that this year. It, it's, it's fairly seamless. You might have to wait a while, but it seems fairly, it seems fairly seamless now. One of the, one of the interesting things, and you, you may be up on this a little bit, is there's a lot of Supreme Court challenges. Uh, uh, against the I keep right reading now. and I keep, you know, the more I see, the more I realize, or I think I understand the country isn't pleased with it. And whether or not it can be fixed remains to be seen. Yeah, it's it's an interesting time right now. But mm -hmm. There's one big challenge, Supreme Court challenge, I think I had read that it'll come out in July or so. And it really has to do with the fact that when the bill was originally written, the states that did not create their own exchange were not eligible to get federal subsidies. And so that's what the Supreme Court challenge is about. And so those, those states, basically the Supreme Court challenge right now is that those states are getting the subsidies incorrectly and they should stop. So you could, if, if, if that happens, you, you can pursue a situation where I don't know what they would do. I have no idea, but where no, the subsidies no, no, stop no. for millions but, it, of but don't we understand that about half the states went in and about half stayed out? Is that about? Almost exactly right. Yeah, yeah. very close. So you could have a situation where half the states and millions of people all of a sudden stop receiving subsidies. And I doubt, in my opinion, the majority would not keep their health insurance. Well, do I remember that the the plan was finally approved by the supreme court by one vote uh Don't but, yeah that's right the that's last, my memory that's right. yeah the last challenge to yeah. it was by one vote and i don't remember what that challenge was about it was it was on a, it was on kind of whether or not 
this was actually a tax or not. I yes, think. that's what it was. And yeah. and it, you're right. Uh, Rob, John Roberts, I think, was, yeah. the, was the one who was in the swing vote. And they yeah. were all, everybody was surprised a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, this one's a completely different challenge. It's kind of based on some some wording in the law, directly related to subsidies. And it, I, it'd be interesting if it does happen and they do over, if they do find them illegal, then what will happen in the marketplace or what will help in the health insurance world in those states would be, it will be Amazing. scary and yeah. fascinating. Absolutely. So that's, that's something I've been kind of watching closely just to see what yeah. happens on it. Who um, can say what the Supreme Court will do? Yeah, no, that's exactly Based right. Based on history. Yeah, it's going to, it'll be, it will be very interesting to see what they do. Very interesting. Um, I've interrupted you enough. You go ahead and give us what you'd like no, for okay. you, you, the public to know. That's okay. This might hopefully will save you some explanations because you have been so good at making things clear. Okay. Hopefully, and you're talking to a lot of people this morning. So, well, it's a uh, you know just a few other things that I that I'll mention, and you can ask any questions that you'd like. Some of the things that that they intended to do with with this Obamacare type coverage was they hoped it would save money because folks would actually be getting some preventative care that they would never have gotten otherwise. And so one of the one of the downfalls you hear folks say about these plans, they have high deductibles. Um, and I'll back up just a little bit. Most all the companies name their plans after metallic names, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. OK. Yeah. okay. And so bronze wasn't as good as a silver, silver is not as good as gold on up. The, uh, the government really hoped that people would take silver plans, at least a silver middle plan. ground. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not the bronze, um, though that is an option, but they really want people to take silver and to entice them to do that, especially folks that receive subsidies. Um, not only might their plan be subsidized, but their deductible would be, could be extremely lowered. So, so somebody might, if they're subsidized, they might come in and purchase a bronze plan and they have a $6,600 per person deductible. They might have the option of a silver plan that was a little bit more, however much more it might right. be, sometimes not a whole lot. But instead of a six thousand six hundred dollar deductible, it might be a five hundred dollar deductible, or it might be a seven hundred and fifty dollar deductible, um, dramatically less. And, and the government's goal was entice people into silver plans, and then yeah. their plan was effective, in my opinion, um, because a lot of times the difference in premium is very small, yeah. and the difference in coverage is is big. So, so that's one of the one of the other little interesting quirks in the plan. <laughs> Um, so you see that a lot, but as far as preventative care goes, you know, that's, that's their big, one of their big pushes. So lots of screenings are, are, are covered whether without any deductible, you know, aortic aneurysm screening, alcohol abuse screening, blood pressure, um, a well checkup every year, um, HIV, diet counseling, diabetes, depression screening. You mean they automatically cancer. pay for these? Absolutely right free preventative services. So that's outside of their deductible. And, and I think the government's, I think the government's goal and that was hopefully over the long run, they save money yeah. on folks who actually get uh, things caught early. Yeah. And, and that may well be true. Uh, but there's a lot of preventative, free preventative services that are required and mandated in these plans. Um, so that's, that's kind of one of the things that most, most folks would consider a, well, that's a, a good, plus. A Any, anything right. you can prevent is good for the everybody. Right. The other things that are kind of mandated in the plans, and again, this is straight off the government's website, but you know, outpatient care, ER trips, uh, inpatient hospital care before and after a baby's born. That's a that's a big one. Uh, mental health, substance abuse, prescription drugs, uh, lab tests counseling, uh, just pediatrics, a lot of pediatric services. There are, there's a little bit of dental coverage that's the government has mandated for pediatrics, um, for kids. Um, 
not so for adults necessarily, but, mm -hmm. but a lot of plans allow that to be added. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of what what it covers and what it's mandated. Now the employer plans that folks are on, um, they have to they have to put a lot of this into place as well. So you'll see some changes mm -hmm. in their coverages. Uh, some are grandfathered. Um, a lot of the requirements for employer plans, uh, the government, the president pushed those requirements off after this last election. So they won't come in. You won't see them for, for a few months down the road. I see. Um, for whatever reason that might have been. Um, but you'll see some changes in some of the group plans as well. That's, you know, that's kind of Obamacare in a, in a nutshell. How does um, a graceful way to say a woman's right for birthing, where does it fit in here? Um, and honestly, I can't answer that question for you very well. I will answer that. Uh, I don't the I know there's broad coverage for for all kinds of childbirth, and I yeah. know there's broad coverage for prescription drugs. Um, there are some drugs I'm sure that there are on the formularies, right. but but I know there's pretty broad prescription drug coverage. So I don't know the answer to that question. Um, uh, I don't. Okay. Clint, I guess we can sign off unless you have something you especially would like to share with us and jointly hope that there's not a hailstorm this week. <laughs> Boy, that's right. We had a big one. <laughs> what was it? 06. Last, uh, well, October, October 13, last year. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, we don't want another one of those. No. Yeah, that's no fun. About the only thing I'd say is, you know, I would recommend that folks be, um, be cautious of a couple things. One, the enrollment periods. And the one thing I'll you know, add, we should post those. Hell, would you help us post those? I can. I can get you a copy. That way, we let people know. And and folks need to also know that throughout the year, if they have life events that occur, the, those can create an enrollment period just for that just for that person. So if somebody lost it, somebody got laid off, and they lost their group plan, right? Um, that creates an enrollment period for them. So they can they so can they could they in, could come and enroll in a plan anytime during the year if uh, if they run into a special enrollment period. So for instance, some of those would be and, th and these are important uh, and they happen a lot. You know, somebody gets married that yeah. creates a special. That's enrollment a different period. Yeah. yeah, having a baby creates a special enrollment period. Adopting a child, losing other health coverage. So you know, if somebody loses their job or they have a plan that ends or or if they lose their health coverage, it can create a special enrollment period for them. Or a um, death in the family? Um, if it was a death in the family, if it was to somebody that was the primary group plan holder, oh, I yes, see. it could. Um, moving outside of your plan's coverage area. Uh, a lot of people are moving around, around right now yes. with job things that are yeah. going on. And, and some of these plans are real state specific because they were created in yeah. good state plans. Yeah. So a plan might not cover outside of a, a state outside of texas so if somebody moves outside of plan area are our neighbor states in or out um all of our neighbor states that i know of are out i'm, out. Not, I'm not sure about new mexico uh, but the other ones are that I, um gaining citizenship opens an enrollment period um leaving jail Open as an enrollment period. Getting in jail? No, uh, no, that is not <laughs> one. <laughs> um, change in income or a household status that affects the eligibility for premium taxes. And really what that would, what that means is if folks have a big income change, they need to let, and they have a plan already, they need to make sure and let, let the marketplace know because they do not want folks getting hit with a, a giant I tax yeah. scare. So that's, I'd end on that probably. Um, Folks need to make sure they're they're guesstimating as closely as they can. They don't want to have a, a really big tax bill. They also need to make sure um, the tax penalties get large. So they're 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 almost by the end of next year they're going to be forced into doing something because it's a big tax bill. What about immigrants? Um, I'm not an expert on that area. However, if somebody has immigrated here and become a U.S. citizen, 
they're el- they have get, become they have become a U.S. citizen. They're eligible. There's also some uh, there are there's also some availability for folks. Uh, this is my understanding for folks who are permanent residents have received a permanent residence. Permanent, yeah. Um, they they are also able to uh, to purchase a claim. Well, Clint, you you could talk insurance all day because <laughs> I know you're a professional. But I've run out of questions. Well, I appreciate you <laughs> letting me talk about it. I enjoyed it. It's a, it's a, I, I certainly don't know everything on it, but I've learned a lot in the last few months. Well, you shared a lot, and I, I appreciate your coming and sharing it with us and with the public because that's our job is to try to help people understand what's going on. Well, I'm glad to do it. Thank appreciate you, you so much. Me. Thanks. And that's been yet another Eastland County Today Live. You guys tune in later. We'll end up having some more. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you